Welcome back to the small stuff. Welcome to the small stuff. Welcome to the small stuff. Welcome back to the small stuff. I remember once I was uh, filling in in a grade four classroom and I was teaching them how to write paragraphs. And within the class, there happened to be a student of mine I was currently teaching at high school and that student was in grade 12. And during this exercise, I had taught these grade fours how to write a paragraph and the grade 12 student came to me afterwards and said, can you show me how to do that? Can we do that in our class as well? And so I then started to use this same strategy, somewhat tentatively, in the senior students' classrooms that I was uh, teaching and then I've also used it with adult education. It is a very simple way to show people how to take their ideas, structure them and create a paragraph. And if you're doing something longer, a longer piece of writing, how to create that longer piece of writing. Let's have a look. I'm going to use a simple example just like I did with grade four. I have a dog. My dog's name was uh, Nowhere. Nowhere was brown and Nowhere was seven years old. He was a Kelpie cross. Okay, so what were the ideas I came up with there? Well, the main thing is this is all about a dog. And what, what other pieces of information did we come up with? Well, the dog's name was Nowhere. That's true, actually. Just as an aside, where did that come from? I think I was in my early 20s. I had a dream that I had a brown dog called Nowhere. So some years later, when I happened to get a dog that was brown, it just seemed appropriate to call him Nowhere. Nowhere was seven years old, and Nowhere was a Kelpie cross. So we've got all this information about a dog, and we've got three points. The way a paragraph can be structured in very simple terms is this. This becomes a paragraph of four sentences. Topic sentence. Brian has a dog. And then I can look at these and say, okay, which order do I want to put them in? And if I was doing this, making this explicit with a group of students, then I'd be using a pen and say that sentence number one. Maybe I'm going to say sentence two, sentence three, sentence four. Brian has a dog. His name is Nowhere. Nowhere is a Kelpie cross. Nowhere is seven years old. There are many English teachers who would say there are other ways to write paragraphs, and that is true. For many students, however, this is a starting point. If we can get the ideas down in a structured way, that then leads itself very simply to writing a paragraph, then it can be edited. Once we get to this stage, it's possible for the learner to say, well, this can all actually be combined. This could be one sentence instead of two. And that helps them to make conscious decisions about the relationship between the ideas. And once we have that nailed down, then they are able to better communicate those ideas. We could extend this about all sorts of pets. Oh, you know, Sally has a cat. Sally's cat's name is, or whatever it is, and go on and on and on. And you can continue this for a number of paragraphs, a number of different things, and once you've got all of this done, then you put it all into order, write it up, and you've got a very cohesive and logical communication of our learners' ideas. As indicated, it worked just as well for grade fours as it has for grade 12s, as it has for many adults. Try it out, see how you go.